Hello y'all. Welcome to part two of my Chicago playthrough in the Hearts of Iron 4 mod, The Land of the Free. In part one, Norman Thomas and the Common Man's Party won an election. And we also invaded Ohio. With all that out of the way, let's go to the focus tree and start doing the focus, affirming our legitimacy. And it says here, we need to root out the stain of corruption from our area. We cannot get it in the way we cannot get it in the way of us trying to reclaim Thomas's rightful seat as president of the United States of America. And what this will do is modify the national spirit and legacy of the Second Revolution by providing us with more daily political power gain and higher war support. And I'm just waiting oh there's an Indianapolis uprising that's happening. Construction one is done. Good Excavation 1, start researching that. I am waiting for 1937 because once we get to that point, we can begin expanding as rapidly as we want. Let's core Ohio now. We have a decision for that. And once all of Ohio is cored, that will help us out with manpower a little bit. Also, the sabotage in Ohio is getting a little bit annoying. Oh, look, they have a fuel silo, even though we don't have we don't even have fuel storage researched. It can't really help us in that regard, but we have one because we took it from Ohio. Affirming legitimacy takes 70 days. Do we got to do expand the WPA? We got to wait there. And where do we move our army to? Do we want to fight Indianapolis or Erie? Maybe we should fight Erie first. Or front, no, fourth army. We'll fight the fourth army first. Move our troops up here. Yes, they have a demilitarized zone anyway. It should be easy to fight them. Complete expand the WPA. The federal state of Iowa is now fighting Iowa. There is a Iowa Civil War. What's this say here? It says, Golden Opportunity. Some people in Iowa, Iowa that once tried destroying us has seemed to have fallen apart. This could be a perfect opportunity to export the revolution beyond the gates of Chicago. We must send in a detachment of our army and generals and turn Iowa red. Duty calls, I guess. Let's do that then, yeah. Can we just, what do we do here? Country changes. Oh, do we just give them military access? What's the difference? I don't get it. Whatever, make it seem like the local miners started a rebellion. Do that. And now, we're gonna be backing them, I guess. Dubuque here, Jacob Debers. We lost one of our commanders for that. Oh well, we'll have to help them out somehow. Transfer troops to the Buick, send volunteers, and that will give, well, it will say here intervening in the Iowan Civil War, which adds, oh, uh, we'll give higher max volunteer force divisions, divisions required for sending volunteer forces, minus 100%. Okay, expand the WPA is done, that improved our stability and war support, and we're now waiting for this to do, oh, we can't do anything with that yet. Mobilize the reserves. Complete that. And can we send you guys... Can we send you volunteers yet? We cannot... Oh, we can. Okay. Give them three. They need three divisions. So we'll hand them three divisions. I hope these divisions don't get destroyed. We had the Detroit Garrison, the Browderite CIA Division, and the Big Red One Division. Grab them. They're going to the Buke here. So we're going to send you some volunteers. I hope you guys don't crash and burn in that part of the, well, in that front there. And now, I need another general here, please. Herbert, Herbert Holdridge, not Herbert, Herbert Holdridge, we need you to do some things. And we have some reserve divisions, okay. Michigan Reserve Division, all these reserve divisions. Complete, oh, that was mobilized reserves, wasn't it? We got some divisions from that. And now it's complete re reuniting with Ohio. It says here... The race is over. The race is over and Ohio is ours. We need to reintegrate it now to its rightful owner. And we get some army reform points for that and we mobilized the reserves earlier. So we have those three new divisions and they are, let me check real, fa real fast. So the Toledo Volunteer Corps, the Illinois Red Guard, and the Michigan Reserve Division. I think. I could be wrong. Whatever. We send our three volunteers here. Please don't get destroyed on the front lines of Iowa's Civil War. That's all I ask. Your elite troops of Chicago, I believe in you. 
I believe in you. Good. Now, what do we need? War games. This will give us some army experience. What is this about? Oh, the fate of the mutineers. Hold on. War games. Do that. And with the capture of the fate of, fate of the mutineers, I'll just read through this. With the capture of Columbus, the men of the Ohioan expedition could resist our forces no longer and pressed for peace. Robert Beiter had been captured in the siege of the capital and had, be, and had been relocated to a state prison in Michigan. Meanwhile, the rest of the Ohioan military had been taken to a military tribunal in Gary. Although they were formerly Federalist, they had defected from MacArthur's command to pursue peace with us to end the war in exchange for neutrality, but this promise went unfulfilled. But due to their willingness to compromise, we may be able to recruit these former Federals into our ranks. And sure, yeah, let's just let, let them join us. We'll get a new commander, I think. Is that what happens? Do we get a new commander out of that? Maybe we do. Whatever. Do we? I don't know. Okay, forget it, whatever. Now, no national focus set. Let's start doing, say, restoring order in Michigan. It says here, oh, it's gonna give us a mission, a mission called Maintain Order in Michigan. The military coups to Cuban government. Yeah, so the Cuban government got overthrown by the military there. Can we advance here? Let's help our guys win this war as fast as possible, please. Advance into Des Moines. We need to take out the federal state of Iowa. Then we'll go after free Iowa. There can only be one Iowa in the world. And it's going to be red Iowa. And the war in Indianapolis is over. Let's now get some more weapons manufactured. Restoring order in Michigan. We'll maintain order in Michigan. Get this done here. The insurgency will greatly, greatly weaken from this. And the state of Minnesota canceled their non-aggression pact. Why? Whatever. Let us choose reeling back the military now. Here's a new division. And the boot stopped. What is this about? Father Joseph had been locked up in Michigan State Prison ever since the Reds took over the northern states. He had protested a common man's party departure from Christian ideals that the United States had been built on. He pushed for civil disobedience, but communist and anarchist militias within, within their ranks would usually violently break up the protest he held. The actual common man's government policy on the church was secularism, but radicals within their armies had been caught burning religious symbols and demolishing churches, and Joseph would take no chances. When the Federalists arrived in Detroit, Joseph was interned in Detroit prison under fears he would instill rebellion among Michigan's population. Martial law went into effect soon after, and frequently communist militia militias nicknamed Browderites were given free reign over Lower Michigan, never relenting in their assaults upon dissidents. One day, a Browderite in their staple brown and red uniform approached his cell. Joseph, Joseph had not seen one in a while, but he knew that when they arrived in the cell rooms, they dragged someone off, never to be seen again. The man approached his cell and Joseph did one last prayer before he would meet judgment. The man took a, took a key out and opened the cell. Stepping aside, he held his arm out, signaling, step out. Joseph complied, replying, so where will you, where will you drag me off to now? Hmm? Oh no, you get to leave, replied the guard, and Joseph was shocked. Martial law is over, and you have been pardoned for your crimes. Now, now get out of here before I tell the judge to change his mind. And from that, we lose some political power, and I have some new divisions, I think. So let's begin the investigations for something. That would take 35 days. Do something with that, please. And we need to advance here, don't we? Yeah, I say advance. We have elite divisions here. Just push forward. We need to, def we need to control Iowa. Or just make it part of our sphere of influence, I guess. And begin the interrogations. Well, I mean, begin the investigations, not the interrogations. I was still thinking of those, that previous event. We're just waiting now. Research slot available. I better be using that, my goodness. Start doing improved machine tools. Good. Paranoia. Oh, my goodness. Although the insurgency threat is mainly posed by reactionaries and various criminal groups, there has been concern of potential dissent within our own ranks. We have seen our Soviet comrades deal with the aftermath of the Stalinist plot, and in return our own common man's party members have become increasingly paranoid. 
Norman Thomas has tried to reassure them, but the continued threat of interfactional infighting cannot be denied. So far, we have created we have created plans for an investigation led by one of three agencies to investigate this dissent. The first option is to hand the plans over to the so-called Braderites, who, while fear for their ruthlessness, are known for their efficiency. However, to avoid accusations of secret police terror, some have decided to just let local police and militia units search for themselves, potentially avoiding a great purge led by the radicals. The last option is to hand the investigation to the army, that while certain in their loyalty to the Socialist Republic, they hold potentially the most reactionary sympathies out of anyone in the bureaucracy, and let's choose to have the people do it or no, have the army prove themselves once more, and as the revolutionary socialist choice, and as the ruling ideology of the country, so we'll have that happen. Now, what do we do? I guess, the factory question? It says here in the focus description, although we control the most industry-rich region of the former United States, we cannot successfully utilize it as the capitalist kleptocrats that own the factories still fear the revolution and have closed down their factories or continue their daily oppression of the working of the working class. Something must be done. And that is what the focus here says. And this is a socialist government path, essentially, so anything with socialism will usually be seen in a positive light. A lot of paths in Hoi Four are generally like this, because it's just more fun that way, I guess. Maybe. The military budget increased. Okay. Will this be worth it? I hope it is. In preparation for Operation Signal, I don't know what Operation Signal is, the military has requested additional funds be siphoned towards them. Special Operation and Infiltration Squads will be funded, and now that the military is prepared to open up a new front at home, we must begin to increase our budget. And can I continue reforming the military? Yes. So let's still, we'll install political commissars and this will give us a General John Gates and improve a number of things with the Western Red Army National Spirit. How's the push in Iowa going? It could be going better, but we are making a difference. And someone was elected president of Venezuela. Do you want any more volunteers? Can I send any more volunteers? I cannot. Oh well. And it is June 1937. I'm just waiting to expand into the 4th Army in Erie and Indianapolis, Milwaukee. That would be great. we just got to keep helping out Red Iowa here. Take Des Moines, please. Crackdowns in Michigan. Oh, boy. It says here, although martial law is officially over in Michigan, a regiment from northern Indiana has once again marched into southern Michigan. The provisional governor has been removed and Hike has been renamed He's been named military governor of the region. Many still suspect the state of harboring Federalist sympathies and is a top priority for counterinsurgency operations. However, the local populace displaced anger at the return of military rule and have taken to the streets in demonstration. The reaction was swift, however, and soon a local protest was framed as being infiltrated by the Federalist. Spec Ops forces have raided multiple buildings and protest hotspots, and the sound of bullets has once again entered the city. While martial law escalates, the violence will appear to as well. And re revolutionary socialism that will rise here, so popularity of liberalism will drop down, will lose 500 manpower, and lose 10% base, base stability, and will get a, like 15% base war support. So there is like I guess martial crackdowns taking place in southern Michigan within the Chicago state and dealing with the corporate stranglehold. Oh boy. Although our base of operations is secure, as the Great Lakes has always been a bastion of the workers' plight, the class struggle continues within our borders. During the Civil War, many of the bourgeois factory and business owners outright refused to provide materials to our war effort preventing us from fully utilizing the industrial power of the region. Due to the Federalist threat, only a few factories were successfully taken over by the Red Guards to utilize for the war. But the crooked kleptocrats that controlled the industries still have a chokehold on our workforce. If we are to only, well, if we are to not only re rebuild our damaged nation, but also fulfill our campaign promises, we have much work to do. Norman Thomas plans to pass a bill that will formally nationalize big business and big businesses and dismantle their corporate empires 
so that they may rob the working class no more. However, the influence of the corporation or well, the corporatist might get in the way of the bill successfully being imp implemented. To counteract this, the vanguard wing, that's a wing of the common man's party, has planned to violently seize any factories refusing to comply using military force and then conscripting the businessmen into work camps where they will toil for their crimes. However, the more liberal factions think these approaches are quite simply too radical and detrimental to the American dream and have suggested we simply buy the factories out. What is the revolutionary socialist option? It is passed to workers' business relations bill, I guess. So that is done, and we get two civilian factories and one civilian factory. So two will be in the Chicago Metro and one will be in Detroit. And with that, I'm going to end what is part two of my Chicago playthrough in the hearts, well, my Sh Chicago playthrough in the Hearts of Iron 4 mod, Land of the Free here. If you enjoyed the mod, you can check it out in the video description. The link to it is there. If you enjoyed the video itself, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.